Welcome! In this video, I will be preparing 2-naphthol from naphthalene. 2-naphthol is an organic building block most commonly used in the synthesis of dyes and in some pharmaceuticals. The first step of the synthesis is the sulfonation of naphthalene. Following the procedure in Vogel's Practical Organic Chemistry, I used 100 grams of naphthalene, which can be acquired as mothballs. But make sure you don't get the paradichlorobenzene mothballs, get the naphthalene mothballs. I also used 166 grams of concentrated sulfuric acid, 40 grams of sodium bicarbonate, and a few hundred grams of salt. The naphthalene was poured into a 3-necked 500 milliliter round bottom flask with a mechanical stirrer, and magnetic stirring will work just as well if you don't have a mechanical stirrer. An addition funnel and thermocouple were fitted to the flask, and then sulfuric acid was loaded into the addition funnel. Though as not all of the sulfuric acid was able to fit inside the funnel, the remaining was put aside for later addition. The naphthalene was then melted and heated to a temperature of 160 degrees Celsius. The molten naphthalene sublimed, depositing on the walls of the flask, so it was melted back down with a heat gun. Then the 166 grams of concentrated sulfuric acid had to be added to the molten naphthalene over the course of 5 minutes, while maintaining the temperature at 160 degrees Celsius. Once the addition had been completed, stirring was continued at 160 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes. After 5 minutes of stirring, without allowing the flask to cool down, the mixture was immediately poured into 750 milliliters of ice water and stirred. The solution was then boiled with 3 to 4 grams of activated charcoal, allowed to cool, and then filtered. This filtration also serves to remove any unreacted naphthalene and any of the dye 2 naphthal sulfone which may have formed. The activated charcoal was incredibly fine and required two additional filtrations through cotton plugs to completely remove. The solution is then partly neutralized by the very careful addition of 40 grams of sodium bicarbonate, generating copious amounts of carbon dioxide gas and a foam of sodium naphthalene to sulfonate. The solution is then heated, redissolving the sodium naphthalene to sulfonate. Then 70 grams of sodium chloride is added, which decreases the solubility of the sodium naphthalene to sulfonate by the common ion effect. The solution is then removed from the heat to cool and crystallize. The solid chunk of sodium naphthalene to sulfonate is broken up into a slurry, filtered, and pressed to remove as much filtrate as possible. A solution of 10% sodium chloride was then prepared and heated to use for the recrystallization of our product. The crude sodium naphthalene 2 sulfonate was dissolved in a minimal amount of boiling 10% sodium chloride solution and was then taken off the hot plate and allowed to crystallize. The crystalline mass of sodium naphthalene 2 sulfonate was again broken up into a slurry, filtered, and pressed to remove as much filtrate as possible. The resulting wet mass of crystals was transferred to a tray, broken up, and air dried, and this process was repeated until a constant mass was obtained. One hundred and eleven point three grams of product was obtained, corresponding to a sixty two percent yield, which is a bit worse than the procedure from Vogel, which got a seventy eight percent yield. And now we can get on to making the two naphthol by the fusion of the sodium naphthalene two sulfonate with alkali. 
the main reagents for this preparation are 240 grams of potassium hydroxide, 100 grams of the previously prepared sodium naphthalene 2 sulfonate, as well as sodium hydroxide, glacial acetic acid, and hydrochloric acid. I rigged together a mountable stainless steel crucible by welding a steel rod to it, and hammered and folded closed the end of a copper pipe to act as our thermocouple probe and stirring rod. To the crucible was added 240 grams of potassium hydroxide followed by 10 milliliters of water. The crucible was then heated to 250 degrees Celsius with a Mecker Fischer burner. Once the temperature of 250 degrees Celsius was reached, the flame was removed and the powdered sodium naphthalene 2 sulfonate was added rapidly with stirring. The flame was reapplied and the mixture was heated to 300 degrees Celsius over 5 to 10 minutes with constant stirring. Then over the course of 5 minutes, the temperature was increased to 310 degrees Celsius. Then the flame was removed to push down the material on the walls of the crucible, after which the flame was reapplied and the mixture was reheated to 310 degrees Celsius for 2 minutes. Now you don't want to have any exposed skin while running this reaction because it loves to spit out molten alkali, as you can see by all the splatter on the bench. And you really don't want to get caustic burns from 300 degree molten potassium hydroxide. After the final 2 minute heating period at 310 degrees Celsius, the flame was removed and the mixture was allowed to cool down to 220 degrees Celsius, before being scooped out into a beaker with 500 grams of crushed ice. Then water was added until the mixture was fully dissolved. Concentrated hydrochloric acid was then added until the mixture was strongly acidic, which took about 400 to 500 milliliters. This precipitated out the 2 naphthol and evolved large amounts of sulfur dioxide gas. The mixture was then heated and then cooled in ice to coagulate the 2 naphthol, making the product more easily filterable. The filtered 2 naphthol was transferred to a beaker with a small amount of water and then dissolved with a minimal amount of 5% sodium hydroxide solution and then refiltered. The 2 naphthol was then precipitated from the filtrate using acetic acid, and the precipitate was again heated to near boiling and cooled in ice to aid in filtration.
After filtration, the two naphthol was air dried and ground into a powder. However, the melting point was low at 118 degrees Celsius compared to the theoretical 122 degrees Celsius. So I decided to recrystallize the two naphthol from 25% ethanol. The two naphthol was then dissolved in a minimal amount of boiling 25% ethanol. And to try and clean up the product, the solution was boiled with activated charcoal and then hot filtered through a coffee filter and cotton plug. The solution was set aside to cool, but instead of crystallizing, the 2-naphthol oiled out. Now 2-naphthol seems to be quite prone to oiling out and needs some convincing to form nice crystals. I tried a few times re-dissolving the oil, letting it cool very slowly, adding seed crystals, but it just kept on wanting to melt and oil out. So I ended up adding water to the boiling solution until I started getting solid 2-naphthol crashing out which finally allowed the solution to form crystals on cooling, but however somewhat defeats the point of a recrystallization, though it's better than getting an oil. And once again, the mixture was cooled on ice, filtered off, dried in air, ground up, and then dried some more. Back when I did the hot filtration to remove the activated charcoal, a lot of the 2-naphthol ended up crystallizing out in the filter, so now we're going to recover that. To do this, I first dissolved all the 2-naphthol residue with ethanol, filtered off all the charcoal, and then heated up the ethanol and naphthol solution. Then I added water to the boiling ethanol to decrease the solubility of the 2-naphthol, causing it to precipitate out. I adjusted the amount of ethanol and water ratio so that it was at saturation while boiling. Then I removed it from the heat, allowing it to cool and crystallize out. Then the 2-naphthol was filtered off and dried. Six point nine grams of two naphthol was recovered from the activated charcoal, and together with the thirty eight point five grams from the main batch makes a total yield of forty five point four grams, which is seventy two point six percent. And compared to the eighty percent from Vogel, this synthesis was quite successful. Here are the three samples of two naphthol that I own. The leftmost is two naphthol I bought off eBay. The center is the main batch of two naphthol, and the rightmost is the two naphthol recovered from the activated charcoal. I'm going to use the 2-naphthol that was bought off eBay as a melting point reference for the 2-naphthol that we just prepared. The literature melting point of 2-naphthol is 122 degrees Celsius, and I found that the eBay 2-naphthol melted at 120.6 degrees Celsius. The main batch with our 38.5 grams of 2-naphthol melted at 120.4 degrees Celsius, which isn't too far off from the literature value and almost exactly matches our reference. The 2-naphthol from the charcoal is even closer to theoretical and to the reference sample at 120.7 degrees Celsius. And from these results, we can be confident that we have made 2-naphthol and that it is of decent purity.